sorry. I kind of uh, left in a hurry there before because I thought that I was a little bit more out of time than I was, but now I know. Um, just trying to make sure that my videos don't get cut off because it's such a pain to have to break them into two pieces, but sometimes I just redo the videos so I don't have to do the video converting. Anyway, where we left off, um, basically it, it, its initial momentum we figured out was three. Um, because we multiply the mass times the acceleration, or, or I'm sorry, mass times the velocity. Um, that, that was three. And then we said that when you bring it to a stop, how much do you not want to get hit by something that's not moving? Well, you really don't care. You don't, I don't know how that would work. Um, but the velocity is zero, so the momentum is zero. So now, let's plug this into our equation. We've got the, the PF minus PI, and we said that's equal to the force times the uh, time interval, right? So it's the force applied, and it's going to be actually by the ball or by the glove, um, times the time interval. And uh, where can we go with this? Well, let's plug our numbers in. We said that the, the final momentum was 0 and the initial was 3, right? So we've got 0 minus 3 is equal to force times the time. And the... Uh, the, the sign of this is going to depend on what you uh, make positive and what you make negative. But, um, so the, the change in momentum was negative 3, right? It went down by 3. And I think it was some force times some time interval. And since this, th these two numbers, when you multiply them together, have to equal negative 3, um, that means that if you make one of these big, the other goes down. So, um, if, if you just hold your hand flat and you try to stop it from, and you try to change its momentum from 3 down to 0 in, say, 0.1 seconds, well then, that's going to that's gonna be a big force, right? Because if this is little, so if you've got a little t, then it's got to be a big f in order for it to equal the, the right size 3. On the other side, on the other side of things, if you've got a um, a little f and then a big t, or rather a big change in time, then that still has to equal the same thing. But here, this is where you get to what you see the baseball players and uh, whatever other sports players using. The longer um, the longer they spend catching it, the longer they spend slowing something down, the less force is exerted. And that should kind of make sense, right? Because, um, say you've got a, uh, maybe a bowling ball rolling at you, you could either stick your hand out and try to stop it instantly, or you could kind of slow it down gradually by applying a force for maybe 10 seconds. So, uh, maybe that'll help some people. You've got a bowling ball rolling at you, you, you could either stop it, like just putting your hand right out, or you could kind of slow it down gradually. So... Starts out fast and then it slows down gradually. I'm having fun with my pen. Um, so uh, if you make the time longer, you in you decrease the force, uh, right? And, and also, this is why um, good uh, like mm, I don't know the right word for it. Maybe good po not good posture. Good like I don't know form is important in like say golf. Because uh, if you have some change in time, times the force. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, let's look at, um, say, golf, where they always tell you to follow through, or in baseball, where they tell you to follow through. And that's because, if um, say you keep the, uh, keep the bat or the golf ball or the, or the golf club in time, uh, I'm sorry, in contact with the ball for 0.2 seconds rather than maybe a regular 0.1 second. Maybe now you have 0.2 seconds. Well, that means that since this doubled, you can cut the amount of force required in half in order to get the same change in momentum. So what do I mean by that? It means that say you want to um, make the f say you're start you, the golf ball starting from rest, so pi is equal to zero. Uh, let me clear out some of this stuff. So, the golf ball starting from rest, so the initial momentum is equal to zero, right? Um, and if the initial momentum is zero, uh, we want, maybe we want to accelerate it, I don't know, what's a good golf ball-y speed? 
uh, you want to accelerate, you want the final momentum to be, uh, and let's say that the, uh, that the golf ball weighs 0.1 kilograms, that sounds reasonable. I probably should have put that over here, but whatever. Yeah, let's put it over here. The golf ball weighs 0.1 kilo. Ah, goddammit. Maybe I can do it like this. Yay! Okay, the golf ball weighs 0.1 kilograms. And, um... Whoops. Yeah. 0.1 kilograms, sorry. And, um, uh, maybe we want to accelerate it so that way it's going, I don't know, 20 meters per second. Whoops, 20. Um, so that means that what, what do we need the final momentum to be? Momentum is mass times, times velocity, right? So 20 times 0.1, or point, or just uh, it's, it comes out to be two uh, units of momentum, the kilogram meters per second, which is a stupid unit, but um, it comes out to be two. So we want our change in momentum to be equal to two of those kilogram meters per second. Um, and what did we say was another uh, way of expressing the change in momentum? That was our force applied over some time interval. Um, and I'm not going to write it in the units. Screw that. Uh, so here's the thing. If we keep the... Let's make like a table kind of thing. Uh, if we keep the golf ball in contact with the golf club for 0.1 seconds... How much force do you have to apply? Well, uh, that turns out to be 20 newtons of force, because 20 times 0.1 gives you this 2. Say you keep it in contact for 0.2 seconds. Well now, 0.2, it turns out to be times 10 newtons. And then if you do uh, 0.3, uh, you get an ugly number. If you do 0.4, you get 5 newtons. So what I want you to see from this is that the longer you keep the bat or the golf club or whatever in contact with the ball, the less force you have to apply to speed it up. And this works the same way when you're slowing something down. The longer you take catching that baseball, the longer you take slowing down that bowling ball, the less force you have to apply um, on average. So um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to go into a uh, couple example problems. Um, let's say, okay, let me erase some of this crap. Um, this is actually one thing that I love about, uh, about, um, Photoshop. That you can get these gigantonormongous eraser tools. You can make things any size you want and have a ridiculous amount of fun. Just like, well, not really fun, but like, you can just be ridiculous. And I love being ridiculous how, who I am. Okay, so, erase, 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 sorry. Almost done, almost done, there we go. Okay, so, uh, what do we have going on here? What is a good example? Okay, so, let's say, um, you have a cat, and the cat is Falling. Oops. The cat is falling downwards, and uh, actually, hmm, probably not the best idea because that's actually acceleration. Let's say um, you've got a a car, and let's say that it weighs I don't know a thousand kilograms. That's a thousand kilogram car. And let's say that it's traveling, I don't know, uh, what's a good speed? 10 meters per second? 10 meters per second. That's how fast it's traveling. Uh, and it's about to, uh, it's about to crash into a wall. And we're going to assume that no, uh, um, no energy is lost, uh, in the crash because of heat or friction or anything like that. It's going to crash into the wall, and it's going to slow down to a uh, final velocity of zero, right? So, uh, so what, how, how, could, and we want to find out how long it takes for it to come to a stop. From the, 
the time that it begins hitting the wall to the time that it ends hitting the wall. And we're going to assume that all forces are constant. So, first let's start out figuring out what we know. Well, we know that the initial momentum is the mass times the velocity, right? That's just the, our equation for momentum. That's our mass times, I think that's 16, times our velocity. Uh, and that gives us 16,000. And then what's our final momentum? Well, we said that our, we, our final velocity is zero, because it needs to come to a stop. That's just zero. Okay, so our change in momentum, or our impulse, or our force applied over some um, uh, interval of time, that's our change in momentum, is just our final momentum minus our initial momentum. Right, so what do we get for that? Uh, we get, well, a negative 16,000. So, uh, if, we if we use this definition of it right here, we get that um, the force times some interval of time e is equal to negative 16,000. So we can assume that the, that the force is going to be negative, not the, not the time. Uh, and that actually should make sense, right? Because, I mean, if the car is going this way, then the force that the wall applies, the wall is going to be pushing back that way. But, um, so, uh, how long does it take? Well, let's see. How do we go about figuring out the, the force uh, that this car is going to apply on the wall? Uh, let me think. It's math times acceleration. Um, hmm. Maybe it might have been a bad example. Let's say this is accelerating. Sorry. Let's say that it's accelerating at 5 meters per second per second. Or 5 meters per second squared. And that at the moment that it hits the wall, at the moment that it hits the wall, it's going at 16 meters per second. And then um, it's it slows down to zero meters per second. So that this is its acceleration. And it has to be accelerating because otherwise uh, it seems like we wouldn't get any momentum. I'm sorry, no, we wouldn't get any force. So how do we go about figuring out how long it takes? Well, our force is equal to our mass times acceleration. So our mass is a thousand and our acceleration is five. So you get five thousand. So now let's plug in for our force that we know. We know that five thousand times some interval of time is equal to, I'm sorry, negative five thousand. These are all negative because of the, uh, um, just because the way that it works. Negative <laughs> uh, five thousand times the interval times some interval of time is equal to negative 16,000. Um, so now we're getting close. We just divide everything by that 5,000. Does anyone feel like doing that math for me? Oh, calculator button. Uh, 1,600, or 16,000 divided by 5,000 equals 3.2. I could have done that in my head, but I'm fat and lazy. Uh, so we have to the interval of time is equal to 3.2. That was probably not a great example, because it, it got kind of weird, and we had to throw in the acceleration and crap like that. But, um, here you go. This is how long it would take for a 1,000 kilogram car that's accelerating at, one me at 5 meters per second squared um, to crash, to slow down to a stop when it crashes into a wall at 16 meters per second. It's ugly. Um, it's not really pretty at all. But, okay. um, probably a better example, I, I, this one I'm actually taking out of a book, out of the, the book. Um, let's select all this crap here. Delete. And then, oh, watch this. It's going to blow your mind. I can take the same selection box. Actually, it's not going to blow your mind. It's going to blow my mind. And delete whatever's in there. I can just, like, delete, delete, I'm on a rampage. Okay. 
take, take away the box, Ryan. Okay, so, uh, let's switch colors again, because I like switching colors, because switching colors is fun. Uh, so we're gonna go to pink now. <laughs> 